right, cheers, folks. Welcome back to Instant Screaming, since I respect you and your time so hard. Let's get right to it. Today, we have The Unborn and The Taking of Deborah Logan, both available on Netflix. Now, most of the stuff that I talk about in, on Instant Screaming is stuff that I've watched a lot more recently. Uh, but The Unborn is something that I saw years ago, and it just recently hit Netflix streaming. So if you hadn't seen it before but were interested or just weren't previously aware of it, here's my take. Put simply, The Unborn is really just a possession movie. It's got about everything that you want in there. There are disturbing dreams, a creeping influence of something supernatural in reality, a weird family connection, a young religious figure, an old religious figure, there's an exorcism, etc. But the big twist here is that instead of the usual uh, Catholic religious trappings, we get Jewish ones. Now, I love possession movies in general, as I've said before, but they are a bit, shall we say, unimaginative when it comes to their traditional visual look and mythology. So completely switching gears and exploring a totally different culture's concept of possession is pretty awesome. And unlike The Possession, which basically just had a pretty standard Catholic possession dressed up with a smattering of Judaica, this movie is just different enough from the standard tropes that it seems like writer-director David S. Sawyer actually learned something about his subject matter and sent his movie around a reasonable facsimile of accurate mythology, or at least that's my impression, armed with the skim of the Wikipedia page on dicks. Now I could definitely see a case being made that this movie is a bit more action and jump scare heavy than some might want out of a possession movie, but the imagery that's used is fairly unique and interesting, and they show a remarkable level of consistency even when calling back to stuff like the crab walk from The Exorcist. It still feels like it's from this movie and not just Oh, we'll take the crab off from the exorcist and put it here and everyone go, yay. Nothing feels like it's just typical. It's all been customized to work with this movie and its, its uh, visual motifs. Now, this film definitely is a bit slicker with a bigger budget than a lot of other horror movies, which may not appeal to some people, but I think it's still interesting enough to recommend you check it out. And our second movie today is The Taking of Deborah Logan, also available on Netflix. Now, this is a found footage movie, possibly marketed with a possession angle, uh, but it's mostly framed as the filming of a documentary on Alzheimer's disease. Now, the crew films the eponymous Deborah's progression after she's diagnosed, uh, but eventually it seems like something besides Alzheimer's may be taking over her mind. This is one of these movies where I'm going to go, it's amazing, but... But here's the thing, uh, Deborah, Taking of Deborah Logan is an amazing movie until like the last 10 or 15 minutes. Inside the movie, I love how the movie builds and the scares progress from these just kind of vaguely abnormal behaviors that are really terrifying on their, their own because they are very real, um, because this is a very real piece of subject matter. Uh, at least initially. And then they just kind of go and they get more and more strange and, and abnormal until it kind of does become very obvious possession and haunting activity. But what messes it up for me is that there's a very specific mystery that they've been putting the pieces out uh, for the crew to uncover and put together as to what is actually haunting Deborah Logan. And when they find out what that thing is, the movie just goes so weird that all the credibility of the atmosphere is lost. And for me, not necessarily the twist, but the delivery and what actually happens is just so weird that it kind of makes the movie lose all of the credibility in that atmosphere that it's been generating. So it's a great movie otherwise, but it just fails to stick that landing for me. But that's just my take on it. Obviously, I've heard a lot of other people. Now, the finale of this movie does end up in a lot of those creepy horror movie gift sets, so it's certainly visually striking. It's just a bit left field. But while I might dislike it, I can easily see a case being made for people really enjoying it. Uh, but even at that, it was only like the last 10 to 15 minutes of the movie that rubbed me the wrong way. But if you're able to look past that, or if you even think you might enjoy a little bit of a curveball ending, it's definitely a great movie and well worth checking out. And that's coming from somebody who thought the ending was a little bit of a letdown. But anyway, that's all the time we have for today's Instant Streaming. Hopefully this helps you out finding something to watch on Netflix. If you've seen either of these two movies and want to weigh in, please do so and leave a comment in the comment section below. If you have any other movies that you might be interested in seeing on this show or on Modern Horror, also leave that in the comments below. And if you're feeling particularly awesome, you can contribute to our Patreon campaign. Please like and subscribe for more videos, and uh, cheers, folks.